So hi, Microper Hunter here again, and uh, I've got a USB uh, 2.0 microscope uh, camera here. Um, and today I want to show you how you can do image stacking using such um, a camera. Uh, a little bit of uh, theory first. The image stacking is uh, a, a method where you take many pictures um, of a specimen, but of different uh, focus. And uh, you then use uh, a computer program to combine all of those images into one final image where the top part of the image is in focus and also the bottom part. And uh, the effects uh, can be quite uh, nice looking. And uh, this kind of overcomes a little bit of limitation of some microscopes that have a very narrow depth um, of field. Now, um, I've got here a compound microscope and you can do this with a compound microscope um, as well. But today I'll be using my stereo microscope. If you do not have a stereo microscope, um, then I recommend that you can still try this. If you have a, a microscope camera um, around, you can still try it by placing a specimen under the four times magnifying objective and then using a lamp uh, to illuminate the specimen from the top. Now this way, um, yeah, you get a very similar effect or it's actually almost the same. Um, you can also do image stacking, of course, uh, using uh, transmitted light uh, with light coming from the bottom. Um, yeah, I leave it up to you uh, um, about how to experiment around. And uh, what I will be doing now is, is I'm going to show you um, how I'm using the program that came along with a microscope camera. And also I'm going to show you uh, uh, the program Combine ZP, um, which allows you to combine the different images into one final image. So the name of the program to capture the images is called TubeView. It's a pretty uh, common, popular program. Um, if uh, you do not have a microscope camera yet, I encourage you to still download it for free uh, to at least have a look at the menu structure. Um, and if you have a microscope camera, chances are pretty good that it already came with a program. Just check that you have the current version. If not, you can always download this. So over here, the camera list, I already have my USB camera connected. And for this reason, the camera appears here on the camera list. And all I have to do is I have to click here and I will get a live view of the wasp uh, that I just placed under my stereo microscope. And uh, what I'm going to be doing right now is I want to make an image stack um, of this video here, of this, not video, of this wasp, of course. And uh, what I need to do first maybe is, is I think the wasp is a little bit too small. So I'm going to zoom in um, a little bit here. Okay. And I'm going to uh, center it um, as well. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do it like this. Okay, I think that's, uh, I don't know. Let me center this properly. That's really important as a matter of fact. I will tell you later why um, this is really critical because uh, we will be losing a little bit from the border from the side because um, when you move, uh, focus back and forth, you see that there is a horizontal drift, okay? I'm not only uh, focusing, but I'm actually also, the, this uh, actually moves uh, the specimen left and right. And this is because of the geometry of the stereo microscope that I'm using, because there are two objectives and the left objective is used for the camera. Um, and uh, so this is not in center because there's always one on the left and one on the, to the right of the center. And this is the reason why it's uh, uh, moving left and right when I raise and lower the microscope um, head. So, um, but that's not to worry because this is going to be uh, corrected uh, by the stacking uh, software. So um, what I'll be doing for next is um, the following. Um, you've probably seen that the exposure all changes a little bit. Um, so I need to set this to manual exposure, but let's go through the menu first. Um, yeah, the maximum uh, resolution has been selected um, for this, um, yeah, the live and the snap images. Snap means individual photos. Um, exposure and gain, that is the important one right now. Uh, right now it's set to auto exposure and there is a rectangle here and wherever I pull this rectangle, everything beneath the rectangle will be correctly exposed and the exposure of the overall specimen uh, will be adjusted accordingly. Um, so you see here now the central part is exposed here but everything else is too dark. Now the background is correctly exposed. So um, I don't quite like that uh, because uh, I want all of the pictures that I take uh, to have exactly the same exposure. So I will go to manual, I will take this check mark, check mark away. And I will now, um, the gain is uh, all the way down and I will now adjust the exposure time. And if there are any areas that are completely white uh, because of the lamp reflection, then of course I have an image loss here. In information loss, that means, um, and then the exposure time needs to be reduced. Okay, so I think that's going to be fine. 
Of course, if I go too much down, then there is the problem that the dark areas will lose information as well. Um, this has to do something a little bit with the dynamic range, and I might have to change the lighting system a little bit around uh, to compensate, uh, yeah, to allow both uh, the bright and the dark areas to be properly exposed. So that is pretty much um, everything um, that I want to do now. Um, everything's properly set up. And in order to take uh, now pictures, um, I could either take individual pictures and then refocus, but this takes way too much time. So what I want to do is, is I want to do a time lapse or an auto capture. Ca auto capture. Um, yeah, 10 milliseconds. That's the exposure time right now. We have to remember this here. Um, auto capture. And here, this is the target directory. All of the pictures will be saved in here. And the naming format is, is I want to have a number. I do not want to have a date. I just want to have this consecutively numbered. That's important because the program, the, the stacking program, will actually use this then. And the prefix is, is WASP. I just call this WASP. And here's an example how the files are going to be called. So it's 0001, and so on. No, I do not want to capture every frame. I tried this once. And within a few seconds, I already had a few hundred frames because um, it takes 10 milliseconds uh, to take one picture. And uh, that's uh, quite fast. And then it's transferred. And so in every, I don't know, I have, I have maybe 100 pictures uh, um, <laughs> per, per second or so. And that's way too much. Probably not that fast because USB is not so fast. But in any case, this is way uh, too much. Um, I want to have a time slot. And every second, it's going to take uh, one picture. And uh, that's going to be fine because the exposure time is quite a bit shorter than this uh, time slot. So uh, this means uh, I'll be fine here because the exposure time should be shorter than, than the time slot, otherwise uh, there is going to be some loss of frames. No, I do not want to set the total images. I just uh, want to keep on taking pictures until um, I stop it manually. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to yeah, simply click OK, and I'm going to slowly turn the focus knob um, until the wing and the needle are in focus. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm starting from the top down, and the top layer, the antenna, which are the highest parts here, um, yeah, is in focus, so it should be fine. Okay, and I'm just going to focus down now um, until the wings are also in focus. So let's uh, get started and have a look at the lower left hand corner down here. The lower left hand corner here, this is where it will actually tell you how many pictures I have already taken. Um, and the sequence begins with one uh, because I have already taken pictures before. So I think it's going to reset it back to one. OK, um, so OK, and uh, let's start uh, turning uh, the focusing knob. Um, I'm going to do this continually and um, just watch how many pictures it has already taken. Yeah, if you go too fast, you might uh, lose some frames. Um, if you go too slow, too slowly, then it's going to capture probably more frames than necessary and then um, it's probably going to overload the stacking program. I tried to stack a few hundred frames once and then the program simply crashed. Um, it's also not necessary to have that many frames. Yeah, the wing is now slowly, the needle is now in focus. And uh, now the wings are also going into focus and let's continue turning until also the wing tips are in focus. And let's keep on doing this. Um, if you take too many pictures, you can always delete them. I think uh, that is now everything is out of focus again. I think that's going to be fine. Um, and I go capture, stop time lapse, auto capture, and I'm finished. Um, yeah, let's have a look uh, where it saved the images. So I just simply uh, click the other window here. Here they are. Yeah, 68. Yeah, 68 pictures. The last one's probably. Yeah, it's completely out of focus. Let's go with the previous one. I might actually, I could probably delete the last three or four images. Yeah, so this one already, the wingtips are a little bit in focus now. So um, yeah, I'm going to 58. Yeah, from 59 onwards, I'm going to delete the pictures because they are all blurry anyway. So I'm just going to 59 onwards. So let's see, so the last one's here. Just going to delete these here and this one here as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what about the first couple of pictures here? They're probably also the same. 
because it took me some time to actually yeah now it's starting to move horizontally so the first two pictures I'm also gonna delete okay this one here and this one here and I'm going to delete this yeah so um, what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm going to start the program combine ZZP so here is the program combine ZP and you're presented with two windows this large window down here that is uh, just the help system and the documentation I recommend that you um, read this unfortunately the program has not been updated for quite a long time uh, but it's still uh, yeah it works quite well I would say so for this reason it's still around and still used and I'm just gonna show you now the quick uh, quickest and easiest way to uh, to stack the images um, you have to click here new and what you do is is all you do is, is you select uh, the images all of them so you press uh, control a and open and it's uh, going to import the images as you can see here okay um, yeah so here it is um, and uh, the next thing is is you go over here uh, you go all methods um, and there are now several stacking methods several stacking algorithms and uh, what will happen is is that it will now try to stack the images using all of the algorithms and then you can choose later on the best image I think that's the easiest way um, there is also a way of actually reversing the order of the list uh, I think it should be from top to bottom I think that's the best way um, and uh, otherwise I'm just gonna yeah I'm just gonna click go and uh, then you have to be patient uh, because this can actually uh, take uh, quite a long time depending on uh, the speed of your computer um, and uh, what will happen is is I'm just going to show this to you as well there will be a new um, subdirectory being made here called output and this is where all of the finished uh, pictures will be saved so but let's click all methods and go okay and uh, yeah it's now going to process all of the images um, and yeah be patient and just let it run and then at the end you should have several stacked images and then you choose the one that you like most because uh, different specimens will produce uh, different results so now you would simply have to be patient so you can now see that uh, the software created a, an output directory here and when you click into this you can see that there are now six stacks uh, basically there are six different methods here and uh, you can now choose the best one so let's click into the first one here yeah so this is how the first one uh, looks like uh, you do notice here on the side uh, that it looks a little bit like the artifacts here also here um, this is because of uh, the alignment uh, process uh, that has the software did so you have to use an image editing program and cut it away that's the reason why I think uh, it's not a good idea to enlarge it too much at the beginning like I show, told you to give it to give it a little bit of, of, of more air so to say on the side yeah so let's uh, click through them and uh, you can see that uh, many of them are quite uh, similar yeah, uh, but in all cases the top of the head of the wasp as well as the needle and as well as the wing are all in focus there's a little bit of artifacting around the needle here around the pin that is it's an entomological pin you see here there is no artifacting um, around the pin so this one actually is better okay it's the weighted average method yeah. Yeah, here this also also looks okay here again look around the needle here again a little bit of artifacting uh, so maybe this is not so good I generally do not recommend that you get everything into focus uh, from the top to the very back because sometimes you want to exclude some parts uh, that are not so relevant in the pack uh, in the background okay um, yeah but uh, yeah here again some strange artifacting here at the top yeah but yeah, I hope you get the idea okay um, you simply uh, do a do all uh, you simply try all methods um, you give it a couple of minutes time and then you choose uh, the image uh, that uh, you like uh, most um, and uh, that's pretty much it so if you um, check Wikipedia there is a whole large list uh, of uh, image stacking software many of which are commercial um, if you are interested in image stacking uh, then 
um, there are, is also a second free program called Piccolé, uh, which I've been using. Um, the features are again a little bit different uh, than um, Combined ZP. Um, you basically choose the program that you like most and that you feel most comfortable with. In any case, I recommend that you read the documentation because uh, there are a lot of settings and, and a lot of tweaking that you can do to improve the image quality. And I've not been doing this, I simply use the standard settings. So I'm quite sure that some of you who are a little more experienced are maybe even able to get better results. So for today, I think that uh, should be enough. Uh, again, a big thank you to all of my supporters uh, of this uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. Do please check out the links below in the description. Also, if you're interested in, in a camera like this, uh, I also included a, a link to this camera into the, in the description. Um, happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.